Um, so first of all, thank you everyone. Um, welcome to the Hypoledra Basu demo. Uh, we'll be talking today, I'll probably talk only for 10 or 15 minutes about Basu, the project, uh, where it's at, the feature it has, and the roadmap and, and all that. So, but really gonna leave a lot of time for questions. So please feel free to drop questions in the Q&A box. I wanna make sure this is, you know, getting the information you want out of this. Um, I won't be doing a technical demo, um, but we'll at least be talking about the project and, and giving you a sense of kind of what use cases it's used for and how you can think about it for your own project. So um, very much excited to do that. Let's um, go to the next slide. So um, uh, before I guess I talk about the greenhouse, it's probably worth introducing myself. Uh, so I'm Grace Hartley. I'm um, the strategy and operations team uh, within the protocols group at Consensus. So our group was the one who originally submitted uh, BASU to Hyperledger almost two years ago, which is kind of crazy, it's been two years. Um, and uh, my role is a senior business manager, so I'm actually not a software engineer, but I do work closely with the team and the, uh, defining the product strategy and um, the BASU maintainers themselves. Um, I've been with Consensus for almost three years now, and uh, prior to that was a consultant at KPMG. Um, I also, within Hyperledger, I'm involved and sit on the technical steering committee and the diversity, civility, and inclusion um, group. So you can find me uh, definitely around uh, the Hyperledger group. Um, but yeah, well with that, let's talk about BASU. So here's the greenhouse. I always like to start and share this with everyone because uh, I think it gives a little context of where BASU sits in the Hyperledger ecosystem. Um, it is one of the DLT projects in that top section. Um, uh, so similar to Fabric or Indy or Aroha, if you're or Sawtooth, if you're familiar with them, um, Besu also uh, performs similar functions there. Um, but now maybe to talk about Besu in particular. So it's a little different than other projects because it's other DLTs in Hyperledger because it's an Ethereum client. Um, um, uh, all the other projects are not Ethereum based, uh, or, or all the other DLTs are not Ethereum based. Besu is the only one. Um, so with Besu, it's open source, just like all the other Hyperledger projects and Apache 2 licensed. It's written in Java. Um, and then it also um, is built for uh, public or private chain use cases, which is, we'll talk about a little more. And that's one of its differentiating features. So this is kind of what we're we'll talking about here. We kind of think of Besu as um, highly unique in the ecosystem because it is the only public chain client. Um, so instead of only being able to run in permission settings, so in a consortium setting, if you've uh, done that or, or been a part of one of those projects, you can also run a, a Hyperledger Besu node on Ethereum mainnet and uh, create public chain use cases on top of it, which is really um, very different than how you're thinking about uh, other projects that you can only run permission networks on. Um, you can see here that we have um, uh, some of the different uh, uh, features that I guess I can go into. So, uh, so permissioning. So, in the private chain use case, you want to set up a permission network. Uh, the permissioning for um, Hyperledger Basu is smart contract based, and you can manage the network, the permission network, um, by the account level or the at the node level. Uh, next, so uh, secure off chain privacy is the next one. So, if you want to send private transactions within your permission network or, or consortium, I kind of use both words interchangeably. Um, if you want to send a private uh, transaction within that uh, within that permission network, you can do so um, using the privacy group feature. So, privacy groups are um, basically I like to think of them as um, small groups within the permission network where you can send and designate uh, private transactions within a certain group um, of the network. So instead of, let's say, if there are, I don't know, four people in a permission network and there are only two of you who want to send private transactions and you don't want the others two to know, uh, you would use privacy groups to then send those private transactions. Uh, it's similar concept to uh, private channels, if you're familiar with that with Fabric. Um, what is kind of cool about privacy groups and privacy generally is that you can, um, uh, add and remove members and still keep the history of the network uh, of that group itself, which kind of gives a, a lot of flexibility in different use cases when 
you know, you don't want to be constantly creating new privacy groups, but you do want to uh, add new members as the consortium shrinks and grows as, as needed. Um, next, so stable and fast finality. So there are a couple of different um, uh, consensus mechanisms you can use in a Hyperledger BASU, uh, of course, proof of work because it is on the Ethereum mainnet. Uh, but then you can also use different proof of authority um, uh, consensus mechanisms for the uh, permission network. Um, so, uh, for example, IBFT2 is the one that the BASU team developed themselves and, and led the leadership on developing it with the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance specification. Um, and that is known for its uh, stability and finality um, uh, of uh, transactions. So what's uh, interesting is I actually, one small anecdote is I was talking to Adam Clark yesterday from Finality on his use case using Hyperledger Basu and, and the recordings available was here at the Global Forum. And he said, you know, that was really uh, that, uh, that consensus mechanism, IBFT2 is the one they use on their network and really meets those needs for kind of, um, it doesn't need a high throughput. Um, so having, but it needs for a settlement risk use case, uh, uh, stability and finality in transactions, which is what IBFT2 does. Uh, the other one is um, the other the, uh, consensus mechanism, uh, proof of authority consensus mechanism that uh, BASU has is also CLEEK, which is more known for its um, uh, liveness rather than stability. But you have lots of choices at the point. You can kind of configure BASU for whatever um, your uh, requirements are, whether private chain or public chain. And then finally, yeah, just deployment, you know, so we are constantly thinking of ways to improve and, and have different templates for our, um, uh, for um, deployment, whether it's, you know, on your uh, cloud provider, there are integrations with Prometheus and Grafana and different monitoring tools and, we understand, you know, it's not just about building cool features, but making it easy to run it, uh, integrating with enterprise systems. So that's something we really focus on in our development as well. Um, so here are just a few example use cases. Um, and I saw I have my first Q&A, so I'll, I'll get to you at the end. Uh, so then uh, a few example use cases. So it's worth saying that uh, BASU is industry use case agnostic. Think of it, uh, so BASU actually means base or foundation in Japanese. And when you're thinking about it, like building it or using it, that's just what it is. It's a foundation that you can build on top of. Um, but um, uh, uh, but with like all the Ethereum um, standards and, and uh, features that go along with that. So it gives you lots of flexibility and um, choice when you wanna think about your use case and you can build it kind of right on top of it. So here are just a few examples. They're really <laughs> not complete. Uh, we, they're about, I would say, dozens of use cases across different industries, um, uh, including financial services. So here you'll see we have um, All Funds, which is, um, uh, um, uh, there. it's a multi-party payment use case. And so they are using Basu for a fund management and dis um, disbursement use case. Uh, Post Italiane it has a customer loyalty program, um, and they're a large uh, infrastructure company in, in Italy, and they have a customer loyalty program where they're using blockchain technology to um, create kind of a, a consortium loyalty pro uh, partner program, which is pretty cool. Um, Blackchain is another one. So they're the Latin American and Caribbean consortium, um, and they've been using Basu actually for years and essentially their alliance is basically creating this Latin American ecosystem all built on um, including governments and banks and um, uh, I guess nonprofits are kind of building on top of the Latin network to use. Um, and, and the Latin network is built on Basu, which is pretty cool. Um, Finality, as I mentioned already actually, the, so that's a, a consortium of financial institutions and they're using uh, blockchain to uh, tokenize assets uh, and also manage um, settlement risk and wholesale uh, payments issues. Um, so kind of a cool like a array. There are a few others that um, uh, are also probably worth talking about, but kind of giving you some sense of there's uh, lots of options when you're thinking about and different ways to make BASU fit for your use case. And if anyone has uh, questions on particular industries, uh, happy to answer that. Um, so just looking 
um, at the roadmap, I always like to show, you know, we are constantly building, constantly developing. We have a quarterly release schedule at this point. Um, and just wanted to show you kind of what are some of our priorities over the next couple of months, probably through the end of the year. One, of course, is high availability and disaster recovery. So um, that will be available in uh, Q3, which is pretty exciting. Uh, we're actually working on interledger integration um, and different ways of um, uh, creating basic uh, APIs to uh, manage uh, transactions between different DLTs, including Fabric. Um, and that's uh, targeted now for the end of this year. And then finally, um, because we're a mainnet client, we're always thinking about how do we, um, uh, or we always have to uh, continuously keep up with the Ethereum mainnet and the specification and the hard forks that go along with that. So particularly one uh, highly anticipated uh, hard fork is the London hard fork, which is coming up in July. And that uh, will include E1559, which the team is really excited about. Um, but uh, uh, kind of the next phase is then, uh, because we are in Ethereum, we also have uh, work towards the, uh, the Ethereum 2 merge um, and ensuring that base is compatible with, um, with that process um, as it kind of continues to evolve over the next couple of years, uh, which is pretty cool and pretty exciting. Um, so how can you get started? So here are a couple of really easy ways, and if one of you did either, any of these three, I would be very excited, but you can go to the documentation site. Uh, our documentation is, um, uh, I'm told, very, very good, and our docs team takes a lot of pride in the work that they do. Uh, so uh, that covers tutorials, concepts, um, how to run a network, um, you know, really kind of across the board, and it's um, very comprehensive. Um, second is there's a, um, and if you go to the uh, documentation site so you can go to quick starts and then set up your private network uh, under the quick starts there as one way to get started um, and we think that's pretty cool that you know you don't need to spend a lot of time getting your network configured and start playing with Basu. you know this these three steps really take under 30 minutes which is great pretty, pretty cool um, where to find us um, so we uh, are on the hashtag Basu uh, channel on Rocket Chat. Would love for any of you all to come introduce yourself, ask more questions, and and see kind of the the community that we're fostering there. Um, there's also um, if you're ready to get started working on Basu, so and you're curious kind of about making your own contribution, we have the list of good first issues on um, Jira, and and also you can look on the uh, documentation site basu.hyperledger.org, um, and get started that way. And then my final plug, which is uh, really exciting, is that we actually just launched uh, a new Hyperledger Basu's training course and um, just this past week as a part of the Global Forum. So, you know, really, if you want that kind of uh, detailed walkthrough of, of Basu and, um, and uh, how to get started and, you know, video tutorials and uh, more details around the consensus mechanisms I was talking about earlier, uh, you can find that there, and I'll actually uh, drop the link in the chat. Um, but yeah, and then uh, just wanted to say thank you, and I'll answer the questions now. I'll go look in the Q and A and do the best I can there. And I'll stop sharing my screen. And let's see. Um, so the first question looks like it's um, from Bob. What's different or added in Quorum compared to Basu? Basu is the upstream version of Quorum, if I got it right. Uh, actually, no. Um, so both are Ethereum clients. So Go Quorum and Hyperledger Basu are Ethereum clients and um, have features and, and meet the Ethereum's uh, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance specification, uh, which defines what is an Ethereum client. Um, but um, Basu, it, it's a completely separate code base um, uh, than uh, Go Quorum. What I will say is that um, both of them are Currently, um, currently uh, worked on at Consensus, which is where I work, and um, a big focus is on interoperability of the different features. But there are some kind of um, key differences between Basu and GoQuorum. Uh, Basu, as I mentioned, is Apache 2 licensed, written in Java, runs on mainnet. Um, GoQuorum is um, uh, LGPL licensed, um, written in Go, and uh, you can't run it on mainnet. 
So um, when you're thinking about kind of your requirements, some uh, folks have different uh, requirements there. Uh, one thing that you said, Basu, is upstream version of, of Quorum. So actually, go um, uh, GEF is actually the um, like upstream version of, of Go Quorum, not, not Basu, just to be clear. So they do have some differences, but both are Ethereum clients, both have privacy permissioning, um, uh, have different BFT uh, consensus mechanism implementations, and a lot of the work that uh, is in the Ethereum space right now is, is working on interoperability, but they are actually different, um, uh, particularly the three things I mentioned uh, before. Um, I hope, Bob, let me know if that answered your question. Um, I know we have um, uh, a few, I'll plan on staying on at least five more minutes. Uh, Arnab, um, how can one get started deploying based on Kubernetes, uh, clusters, cross-org setups? Um, I am not our DevOps engineer, so I can't, um, I'm not the right person to give you detailed steps on how that can work. Um, I can see, I'm going to just double check if there's, uh, we do have a um, deploying Hyperledger Basu with, with Kubernetes um, uh, reference implementations that I'll drop in the chat right now that I think will probably help um, get you started at least. But I'm not, there you go. Um, oh, Bob, great. Glad that I answered your question. Or not, let me know if that um, link is what you're looking for too. Oh, great. Thanks for sharing that too. Yeah. Any, what other questions are there? I know I moved very quickly. Okay, probably one just a minute. Looks like, okay, if there are no more questions, that's great. Um, I'm dropping in the chat right now the Basu Essentials training course, as well as my email. Uh, feel free to find me via email, LinkedIn, Rocket Chat, I'm there too. Uh, happy to answer any questions, or if you're curious more about getting involved with the Basu team, we'd love to have you, um, and I really appreciate you all joining.